Today we finish the rounded and backed case book by bringing the book block and the cover, what we call the case, together in the process known as casing in. I'll demonstrate two approaches to casing in. The first method I'll demonstrate is by far the most common approach and then I'll demonstrate hanging in before full casing in and I'll explain the pros and cons of the two approaches. In the common approach, you very carefully position the book block in the case, making sure the squares are even, and then carefully open the top cover, paste out the paste down, and then close the book. Hopefully, nothing moves and the squares are what you wanted. This is the tricky bit, closing the book without moving the book block. And there are a few details that if you pay attention to, will make everything go well. It's a good idea to put a piece of waste paper under the paste down before pasting out. Always have some downward pressure on the book block while pasting. Just a few fingers. And don't be aggressive with your brushing. Start by pasting under the tapes and put them down. And then under the scrim and then put the scrim down. And then paste out the full page. Paste out from the centre roughly in a radial action. If the paste down starts to curl up due to the moisture and the adhesive, the best thing to do is wait a few minutes for the paper to relax. Once the moisture equalises in the paper, it will stop curling. I'm using methyl cellulose to paste out. The question is why? Surely it would be better to use PVA and introduce less moisture. I like to think of using paste or methyl cellulose as having a safety net. If the book ends up crooked in the case, it's an easy matter to peel back the paste down and redo the casing in. If you use PVA and the book ends up crooked, it's almost always the case that you'll end up destroying the paste down trying to lift it. This is known as having a really bad day at the office. In addition to the ability to reposition if needed, often you want a significant pull from the paste down to counter the pull of the covering materials of the case. So often there's a technical reason to use paste too. And by paste I mean starch or wheat paste or methyl cellulose. They're all roughly equivalent for this operation. Maybe you've covered the case in full cloth and you don't want to over pull the boards inwards. After casing in a few times, the confidence of having done it successfully will make you comfortable using mix, which usually pulls less. But with mix, you do want to work quickly as you'll have a limited window of opportunity to lift the paste down if required. Once the first board is done, the second board is much easier as the book is less likely to move. Put some moisture barriers between the boards and the first free end paper and put the book in the press or between boards and under a brick. Notice that I leave the shoulders hanging out of the boards as I don't want to crush them. When using paste, I like to leave the book in the press at least an hour to allow the paste to key well. Then take the book out of the press and let the book dry open with the block supported with some waste pieces of board. Once the book has dried overnight, you'll notice that the paste downs extend slightly past the book block. This is due to the paste down stretching when it was pasted out. This is ugly and should be fixed. There are two options to fix this. One had to be done before casing in. What I'm showing here is lightly cutting through the paste down and peeling off the thin strip that was showing. You need to be careful not to cut through the turn-ins. If it is difficult to peel up the thin strip, some water applied with a cotton bud will do the trick. Always wait until the paste down is dried before doing this. 
Trying to cut wet paper is inviting disappointment into your life. Before casing in using the second method, I'll talk about the second approach to dealing with the stretch of the paste down, causing it to show past the book block. The second method is to pre-trim the paste down, but by how much? If you have a piece of the paper the paste down is made of, you can check. Split the piece of paper and paste out the one piece and see how much it stretches compared to the unpasted one. This is how much you need to trim off. I'm going to use PVA to put down the paste down in this example as this method of casing in is fairly safe with PVA. Also I know from experience the paper I've used has an overly strong pull if used with paste. Before I demonstrate the second approach to casing in, I'll quickly put a title on one of the books. I think I promised some details about labelling and I'm afraid I'm going to break this promise. My blocking press went underwater and while I'm sure it can be saved with the help of an electrician, in the meantime I bought another press that's the same model. I have a soft spot for these Marshalls. I was told that it was in working order, but when I used it for the first time, I found the impression was not even. Then I noticed some damage to the front lower plate of the press. This press has fallen forward and been badly damaged at some point. I spent a day trying to fix this, and while I've made it better, it's not perfect. I had my old press very close to perfect. So for now you just get a short clip of me feeling really sad about the colour this poor mistreated press has been painted. I sort of like this colour, just not on this press. One more thing before moving on to casing in. Do you remember when I made the case? I said I normally wet the spine stiffener before gluing in place, but wasn't going to because I wanted a nice flat spine for using the blocking press to apply a title. This worked great and made titling easy, but now here's the downside. The spine stiffener is well stiff. It doesn't want to wrap nicely around the spine. Maybe we should do some quick time travel and see what I normally do. Normally I wet the spine stiffener before gluing in. I finish making the case and then wrap the case around the book while the spine stiffener is moist and flexible and let the case dry in place around the book. The result is the spine stiffener dries in the shape of the round of the spine and this makes casing in much easier. So what to do with the flat spine? I need to make it fit. I usually use a piece of dowel and roll the spine over this until I get it to the right curve. Another common practice by bookbinders is to pull the spine of the case over the edge of your bench. My bench has a very sharp edge, so I don't like using this method. I think it works well if your bench has a nice rounded edge. 
You can just try and roll it freehand, but it's easy to put a crease in the spine and ruin your day. In this method of casing in, I will hang the book in the case at the shoulders. I put a thin line of PVA along the inner edge of the boards and the inner edge of the shoulders, just a thin line. I then put the book in position and check the squares. If the squares are not correct, then the thin line of PVA is easy to detach without damage and the block can be repositioned. But be careful not to let the PVA key for too long. Work briskly. Once the block is positioned well in the case, put it between boards for 10 minutes. This will let the PVA key well enough that the boards can be opened without the block becoming detached. The advantage of this method is that the book is easily and safely repositioned and once in position there's little chance of the book being cased in crooked. After taking the book out of the press, finish casing in as before. One little difference is that the scrim and tapes will probably want to go towards the boards and not down onto the paste down. June would say to let the book tell you which way to go with the scrim and tapes. In my very first bookbinding course, I was taught the first method of casing in by June McNichol. But then I'm sure June also taught me the hanging in method, and I believe she got it from Maureen Duke. I've been looking for documented examples of the second method, and I think all I've got is the Society of Bookbinders video of Maureen Duke, where I think she describes this approach. Check the comments section for updates on my search for documentation on this approach. So which method should you use? I now usually use the first method. For a while I was convinced the second method of hanging in was better for beginners and I taught this approach in workshops for maybe two years. But now I've decided it adds complexity, and beginners don't need complexity. So instead I use the safety net of using slow tacking methyl cellulose in courses. If I'm casing in with PVA for reasons such as not wanting to introduce too much water, then I'll often hang in. In the more in Duke inspired fold back sketchbook, casing in is a bit difficult because the shoulders aren't well defined, and in this case I do hang in.
So that is the rounded and backed cased book complete. I know not everyone gets as excited by this structure as I do, but as bookbinders, being able to independently design and execute a book using this structure, I think is the sign of a solid intermediate going on advanced bookbinder. And while we may have completed the book, I'm not done with videos about it. I'll do a follow-up video on adding sewn flexible made end papers. I've tentatively named this video Pimp My Cased Book. And I'm also going to do a video, and you'll never guess why, where I'm going to cut bits out of it. And there may even be a third milking of this series where I look at different covering styles, including the rare and elusive three-quarter binding. I hope you found something useful in today's video. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you're able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and select the notification bell. Until next time, cheerio.